If you integrate GPT into your software applications, you want to receive answers in a structured format so you can parse them efficiently. If at the moment you're achieving this by describing in text form what kind of answer you want from GPT, I think there is a better way that I want to show you in this video. Hi, my name is Bernhard, I'm a software engineer working in Vienna, and in this video I want to do a deep dive into the function calling API from ChatGPT and give you insights about how you can use GPT in your applications to receive answers in a structured format using JSON schemas. Let's get started. All right, so let's dive in. First of all, I want you to have a good understanding of what it is we are trying to achieve here. Our input in this case is an email from a coworker. It could read something like, hey Dave, I just made a test run with the new car prototype. It seems the autopilot is still ignoring stop signs when there is a cow next to it. This is dangerous and needs to be fixed ASAP. What we want to do is use a large language model like GPT to parse this unstructured text into a structured object, in this case a JSON object, uh, and we want the JSON object to adhere to a certain schema. That means we want it to have certain properties, like in this case a summary, an assignee, a description, maybe a list of subtasks and a priority. Uh, and we want to use GPT directly to generate this object. We don't want to uh, create it ourselves. So basically we want to ask GPT, please take the email as an input and as an output provide this JSON object. Now you could of course just try to ask ChatGPT to produce a, an object like this, but it's very difficult uh, without using the proper APIs to teach ChatGPT what this object should look like. It may seem simple in the first place, but if you want to do things like validating a list has a certain number of elements or uh, some of the fields need to be required while others may be optional, it quickly becomes very complicated. However, uh, luckily OpenAI has provided an API that lets us do exactly that. And in this video, I want to show you how you can use it. Of course, all of the code will be in the video description and you can use it for yourself. To understand what it is we're trying to build, let's have a look at this sequence diagram for our solution approach. So we have three entities, the email sender, which is the person sending the email. We have the orchestrator, which is basically a small Python script that takes the email and then does some magic to call GPT. And in the end, we have uh, GPT, in this case, the OpenAI API for GPT. What happens first is that we get the raw email text from the sender and we send it to the orchestrator. Then in the orchestrator we prepare a JSON schema. I will go into more detail later, but this is basically a description of what the final object should look like. Then with that schema and the raw email text we make our call to the GPT API, specifically to the chat completion create method and we provide the function call argument including the JSON schema. What we then get back from the GPT API is a structured result that is adhering to the JSON schema we have provided. So basically by providing this JSON schema we teach GPT what the resulting JSON object should look like and we get back an object that definitely conforms to the schema and we don't need to create the JSON object ourselves. Now to understand how we can force GPT to respond with a JSON object that conforms with the schema we provided, we take a look at the official API documentation from OpenAI. Of main interest for us are two parameters, the function call and the functions parameter. The function call allows us to force GPT to call a specific function, while the functions parameter itself allows us to define what kind of functions GPT has access to. The usual way this is used is that in the functions array we would provide something like get current weather or get user location and then GPT could either decide for itself that it wants to use one of these functions because for example it wants to get the current weather uh, or in this case what we are doing we can force GPT to call one of the functions by setting the function call parameter to the name of that function. This is what we're going to do. So the uh, blue one, the function call, we are going to set to the name of our own function that we're going to define. And how do we define it? We 
added to the functions parameter. Uh, basically, this is a list of functions that we can provide. In this case, we just provide one function. And as you can see here, the function uh, can also include a JSON schema object. So using this trick, we can force GPT to call our function in blue, and we can define the JSON schema for that function here in, in orange. Combining both, we can um, force GPT to use our schema for the generated object. Now, what is a JSON schema? You might not have heard of that. It is not mandatory to use JSON schemas when working with, with JSON objects. However, it's very useful to do so. A JSON schema defines rules a JSON object needs to comply with in order to be considered valid. So a very simple JSON schema is shown here on the left. Um, it defines that the type of the object must be an array, so a list, and the items of that array must be numbers. So an object that would be valid considering this schema would be a list of numbers. What would be invalid would be a list of numbers mixed with strings because we said the type must be a number. Uh, of course the JSON schema can be much more complex and in this case we have an object with multiple properties Let's start with a valid example first, so you can um, better understand how this is defined. So we have a fruits object and the fruits consists of a list of fruits. Each fruit consists of the name of the fruit and the color. And as you can see on the left, this is exactly um, what the schema permits. And basically you can use schemas to define arbitrarily complex objects. So we can use this schema definition to define exactly the kind of object that we expect from GPT. Now, to force GPT to call our function and therefore use the JSON schema we provided, we will use a code that looks something like this. We first define the schema. So the schema is basically a string that looks like the schema we've shown before. Then we set the OpenAI chat completion create call. This will call the GPT API and return the object. What we need there is basically to uh, select the model, in this case GPT-4, a specific version of GPT-4, and the messages where we first define the system message that teaches GPT what to do, and then the user message, which would be the content of the actual email. Then we provide the two parameters we first mentioned, the functions and the function call parameter. Uh, whereas if you remember the function call parameter is the name of the function that GPT must call and the name of the function must then also exist in the functions parameter. In this case uh, there is just the one function that we name create issue and the parameters um, key here is then used to define the schema. What you're seeing now is the orchestrator script. We start by doing some imports and we use the .env package, which allows us to put our open AI key into a .env file. So I don't need to share it with you here in the screen sharing. We then set the open AI API key to that value and we are then ready to start making requests. As mentioned, we start by defining this schema. Coming back to our initial scenario, we wanted to extract information in a structured way from an email that we can then put into a ticketing system. So the schema that we're seeing here is defining the structure of the JSON object that we can then use to parse the ticket info from. So the properties we see here are the usual properties you would expect for a project management ticketing system. And we start by uh, defining the summary, which is the title of the user story, the assignee, in this case is an enum, so we allow GPT only to pick between those four values. We have a front-end team, a back-end team, a product management team, and a quality assurance team, and GPT itself should decide which of the four teams is most likely to take over the issue. We then have a description, and we teach GPT that it should be very verbose, and should be in the style of a typical user story. Then we have a subtasks list that 
uh, need to be achieved in order to achieve the whole issue. They shall not overlap and be very specific to the user story. Then finally, we have a list of priorities. Uh, again, an enum between low, medium and high. And uh, we define that all of the properties in this case are required and no one can be left out by GPT. Now, using this schema, we will then uh, call the chat completion dot create method with the exact GPT model. The system message in this case, we're teaching GPT um, to be a certain kind of AI and that its issue uh, it, and that its primary aim is to create issues in a project management software based on descriptions provided by the users. We then um, provide the user message, which in this case is the email text that we received before from the uh, email sender. And as mentioned, we have the functions and function call parameters, which define the name of a function that it is required to call together with, with this schema. Finally, after calling the method, we will return the um, return message and we also print out how many tokens have been used and how many US dollars those tokens would be converted to. Now, if we run this function, this is going to take some time, but we will then see the structured output GPT is providing us. And you can see it is finished. Going back to the email text we had, it was the same one I've shown you before. It was the run one regarding the new car prototype where the autopilot is ignoring stop signs next to a car together with some others. And we can see that the first issue that is created by the script is indeed very fitting. We get a summary, autopilot ignores stop signs. When there is a car next to it, we get the assignee, the description, uh, quite suitable subtasks and the priority of high. I also added some other text to the email. Uh, also, whenever I switch to a different radio station, all windows open. So we should also see this. Uh, and we do windows open when switching radio stations. All windows of the car open automatically whenever the radio station is switched. So it also recognized this successfully. And it also um, got it right that this is less important than the safety issue that we had before. And finally, when I drive behind a red car, the AC stops working and molten lava is coming out of the steering wheel. Um, and it also gets this one right, AC malfunctions when driving behind a red car, which is also potentially dangerous as it's uh, recognizing correctly and also putting to priority high. So this whole exercise took a couple of seconds and only cost like two cents and greatly has the potential to improve uh, certain workflows. So I hope this was interesting to you. You can find the code in the video description. I hope you're having fun uh, experimenting with this new capability of GPT and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.